<laughs> um, it's amazing what you find out. I, oh, stop telling me to click for... I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm going to throw this fucking laptop away. Um, I've had some problems on my Instagram account, on my phone. And it is just on my phone, in that it keeps freezing up. And it was getting utterly pointless. It would actually go into camera, and then I couldn't come off camera. And, of course, it would just be a black screen, because I wasn't intending to take a picture. So it's been going on a while. So I uninstalled it one time, and then I went back through another email address by mistake through Facebook, and then managed to set up another account. <laughs> So I fucking pretty much ignored that one. So I just ended up this morning just setting up a new account completely. Um, which I'm now going to be building up. The other one's gone as well. I mean, it matters not what these accounts are called, really. It's just a bit of local colour, you know, to fill you in. <laughs> fill in the blanks sort of thing. Anyway, as you know, social media does like to make suggestions as to who you should follow or who you should make friends with, and yada, yada, yada. Well, fuck me. Suddenly, and I'll tell you how I know this in a minute. Suddenly, someone called Rebecca Ginogli popped up, who apparently is in my contacts. Rebecca Ginogli, in case you hadn't guessed, is the wife of Jonathan Ginogli, who is the local MP in Huntingdon, who took over from John Major, if you needed to know. Um, which was very fucking weird, because I've never even spoken to the woman, as far as I'm aware. And if I did, it was a very fucking long time ago when I was a counsellor. And that was before I was into hardly any of this, Facebook and Twitter and all the rest of it. I might have had a Facebook account at the time, I can't remember. Um, so I thought, well, that's a bit fucking strange. You know, if Jonathan Ginogli had popped up, although I doubt he's on Instagram, but, you know, if Jonathan Ginogli had popped up, fine, because I've probably got some email addresses for him somewhere or something like that. He's in my contacts from when I was a counsellor. You know, but this woman, to my knowledge, I've never spoken to her. I didn't even know her first name. So it's not like I've been going out there looking for her. I have this morning. <laughs> I sparked all kinds of fucking Googling this morning. <laughs> but the funniest thing is, I can't find you anywhere. Not on Facebook, not on Twitter. You're not on my email. You don't have my phone number. So you've got to be using an assumed name. Now let me explain a little bit to you about how social media works. It works off the device. It doesn't work off the name. Ergo, if you set up two different Facebook accounts under two different names, but you're using the same computer, phone, laptop, whatever, someone somewhere does actually know that that's the same person, or is at least using the same machine. So in that respect, it doesn't surprise me that you can't find me. I can't find you. I suspect Facebook, because as I mentioned earlier, well, as I'm about to tell you, I've actually put this Instagram account connected to Facebook, which I didn't do with the other two. And lo and behold, your name suddenly pops up. So obviously with this one now, when I start building it up, when I take a picture, that'll come through to Facebook. But with the other two, I did not do that. So I'm amazed to say, I mean, I knew there were stalkers and spies, but I'm amazed to say the local MP has his wife spying on me. 
<laughs> I mean, my friends list has practically doubled in the last few months, so they've been very active with that. So I've had a million fucking acceptances and, and whatever coming in. Well, not a million, obviously, that'd be silly. But you, you know what I mean, a lot. Um, so yeah, with a different name, you've obviously sneaked under the radar. Or an abbreviated name or something. And let's face it, it would take me a solid week of sitting here looking through all my friends to find out who you were. That's if you are on Facebook. I mean, I'm just surmising. But you're there. You're somewhere. So Jonathan Ginogli, who said that 25 years worth of theft in the public purse was not his job. And I quote those three words, not his job. Right? Which means, as far as the sort of bookkeeping and accounting and... Um, expenditure of public cash is concerned, you're not the slightest bit fucking interested, mate, as a locally elected MP. As an MP elected by the public, you're not the slightest bit interested where all their money goes. So I thought, <laughs> I thought I'd just slip that one in there. Um, you've actually had your wife spying on me. You fucking wanker. I mean, that, you know, Chief Constable Nick Dean is, is probably very glad he's not going to get a letter this week because I've actually just proved collusion with the local MP covering up 25 years worth of theft from the public purse. Because why else would you have your fucking wife spying on me? There is no other reason whatsoever that her name and her profile would have popped up there on my phone this morning. I've never met her. I don't even know her first name. As far as I know, she's never tried to get in touch with me. I've recently changed my phone number, my email, and quite a lot of other things, including two Instagram accounts. So how anyone could be tracking me, I have no idea. Not without a warrant, anyway. <laughs> oh, I forgot you don't like warrants. Oh, you do, but only the address has got to be right. That's right, isn't it, Cambridge, please? Only the address has got to be right on a warrant. Everything else can be wrong, but that's fine as long as the address is right. Um, wow. <laughs> so that's my letter opener. Uh, wow. The local MP is such a coward. He's got his wife spying on me. Did you enjoy your holiday in Antigua, by the way? He seems to take a lot of holidays in hot sunny places over Christmas and New Year. What's going on sort of parliamentary wise then that you can just sort of jet off and spend a week in the sun? It's quite easy to find people on social media, especially a daughter who's at Oxford University and who's about 19. I mean, really. See, if I've got something to say or do, I'll come out and say it or I'll do it. You people just fucking sneak around in the background, you're devious little fucking shits. You give not a one fucking flying fuck about the public. So I'm challenging you to come out and meet me, Jonathan Ginogli, in a public meeting, in a public place, because let's face it, if the police want me dead, I can hardly trust any of you to meet privately, can I? Nor would I want to, actually. It should be in a public place. So I'm challenging you. Ginogli of inherited wealth. Do you know he got, I was Googling this morning, like I said, for five meetings, sorry, 12 meetings with, I think it was a law firm he used to work for, right? And then he was doing consultancy work for them because he's an MP and obviously, well, he doesn't give a fuck about the public, does he? So the public work can fuck off, you know? 
I'll just go meet my old mates the law firm and charge them for consultancy work. Uh, 60 grand for 12 meetings. 60 fucking grand. And that's just consultancy work. That's not his job. Do you miss life on the front bench because of me, Jonathan? Because that was the reason you got booted onto the back bench. No, come on. Come on, fucking meet me. Prove you're not a fucking coward. We'll meet in a pub downtown. On Saturday afternoon. I bet next Saturday afternoon. Prove you're not a coward, mate. 